High Growth with HTDC on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and HTDC is the state's high tech development corporation. We are the main supporter of tech, innovation, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing. And there's a ton of exciting stuff going on in Hawaii, and that's the stuff that we want to feature here on this show. First off, before we meet our wonderful guests today, I'd like to make some announcements. So I want to say a big congratulations to Ikehu. They're the winner of Big Island's Demo Day. This was this past Saturday. So Ikehu is a startup that's looking to offer incentives to residential customers who help manage power consumption. So I think with all the new sustainable energy coming in, the grid is the power grid gets more unstable. So they want to offer incentives to people to kind of help manage this and manage their power usage <coughs> so that it levels out the power. Um, so they have an exciting business. I think that's a very cool business idea. So this Thursday, May 15th, is Maui Tech Night, where Ikehu, along with some other startup companies, will be able to pitch before an amazing group of VCs from Silicon Valley and beyond. So this is Maui Tech Night on Thursday, May 15th. Right after that, May 16th and May 17th is Maui Startup Weekend. This is going to be held at the Maui Research and Tech Center in Kihei and kickstart your business and build your startup team at Startup Weekend. So that's this coming weekend. And then, as usual, I'd like to call out all SBIR Phase 1 winners, Small Business Innovation Research Phase 1 winners. HTDC offers the state's matching grant fund, so we can offer you up to 50% of your Phase 1 award. So if you've won one recently, please contact us at sbirhtdc.org. We look forward to hearing from you. And most importantly, tomorrow, Wednesday the 14th, is the Founder Institute Lecture with Tyler Crowley. He's a well-known startup mentor, and this is going to be held at Iolani's School Sullivan Center. And so I'd like to introduce my guests on that note. I have the Tyler Crowley as my guest, Hi, and also Sandy. Brent Kakesako of Founder Institute. So did you want to kick it off? Uh, yeah, thanks for having <laughs> us. Mm -hmm. um, and Tyler's a trooper. He just got in last night. So already trying to build the ecosystem here. Uh, yeah. So Founder Institute, it's a startup school out of Silicon Valley helping first-time founders uh, grow and create their companies. Mm -hmm. uh, here locally, Russell Chang and I are the co-directors. And uh, we kind of jumped in uh, to really, we saw this as an opportunity to bring in a huge resource mm -hmm. uh, to Hawaii and help fill a gap we saw in the startup community. Mm -hmm. And so there's a semester coming up in June, uh, the second semester, uh, where we're taking on uh, first-time founders. And as part of that work, uh, Founder Institute was able to pull Tyler down here. And Tyler here is an expert. Uh, he's worked with a number of communities, startup communities around the world, help them kind of get started. Mm -hmm if you will, and so we're excited to have him here and to, I'm excited personally to learn a lot from him. Are you going to be a mentor to some of the companies, um, possibly? Well, this is the first trip, and <laughs> what usually what happens is uh, there's a lengthy process where, um, the, you know, the first step is kind of just understanding what what is happening here, mm -hmm. at what level has it matured, at where on the curve is it mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of its maturity. Or metaphorically, from preschool to PhD, like, mm -hmm. is it, are, are, we? are we in first grade yet? Are we in mm -hmm. kindergarten? Where are we? Uh, and find out what ingredients are here. And there's another metaphor I like to use, which is the um, see the recipe for growing a community. And in that recipe, you have certain ingredients. Mm -hmm. And some cities have really good flour, and some cities have no flour, mm -hmm. and some cities have really good water, and and mm -hmm. and you know. We, we got to find out what ingredients are available here. Mm -hmm. Which ones are we missing? Mm -hmm. How do we get them, if we can? How do we use the ones? How do we improve the ones that we already have? Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's it's doing an assessment of that. What, what is here currently? Okay. A and um, that's phase one. Great. Yeah. And so is that what you're here doing? That's what I'm doing right now. On this now. visit? That's right. Nice. Yeah. We have the best water. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Metaphorically and literally, yes. yes. <laughs> Very cool. I mean, since we're on the topic, I wanted to ask, what are those ingredients, specifically? Water, flour, sugar, no, eggs, uh, 
cake? Uh, is this a cake? Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> making a cake. <laughs> cake community cake? Yes. Right. Well, why make a quiche when you can make a cake? Yeah. Um, so the ingredients for growing a community, there's really about 12 in total. There's about four mm -hmm. key ones that you mm -hmm. kind of are, are necessary. It's kind of like a cake. It's like, well, you know, if you, <laughs> you, if you have frosting, <laughs> it's nice. You don't have to have frosting, technically. That's true. Um, but, there, but, you know, flour is, would, you know, you would call that a key ingredient, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. like milk, perhaps, uh, eggs. And so the real key ingredients to growing a community are um, some, some way of getting engineering talent which I, kn I already know is a bit of a struggle here, but you're not too, this is not unique to Hawaii. Uh, Australia str also struggles with hmm. getting it's engineers. Like workforce. Yeah, just, just people that are graduating with computer science degrees, mm -hmm. um, that are interested in working in the web internet space. And this is, this is a common problem around mm -hmm. the world, actually. There's few cities in the world that have a good pipeline of engineering talent. Silicon Valley is one of them. Um, New York and LA have a decent, um, Tel Aviv has outstanding engineering talent, hmm. which is why they're one of the best cities in the world. Um, so does that kind of go back to the school, the colleges? Yeah, the colleges the play a, a very important role in that. <coughs> and England, by the way, used to really struggle with this. And they knew <laughs> they struggled with it, with the exception of Cambridge. We used to, they had mm -hmm. a, but relative to the size of the country, mm -hmm. they had an incredibly small pipeline of engineering talent. And, and they've taken, the government there is very committed and very serious about this issue of growing their ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So they've recently, in the, in the last past few months, made it mandatory for all children eight and above to learn how to do computer programming. Wow, that's awesome. That's, that's when you know your government is serious. Yeah. <laughs> is when they're, when they're forcing kids eight years old to learn computer programming, mandatory. Wow. At every school in the country. Yeah. But there's a lot of good reasons to do that. I mean, it, mm -hmm. in terms of the cognitive development uh, that goes along with that, mm -hmm. which, is, which is why students learn math, and it's why you had to learn algebra mm -hmm. and maybe really never use it day to day. It's Learning logic. computer science is the same problem solving, mm -hmm. and in some ways even better, some would argue. Some cognitive development theorists mm -hmm. would argue that it, you know, it develops that part of the brain in an even more efficient kind of a way. Mm -hmm. Um, and now there's, there's ways to learn computer programming that are very engaging mm -hmm. um, from very early ages. And, and, and actually, you guys are doing uh, this Minecraft thing, yes. which is an incredibly cool way to get kids at the earliest ages excited and interested and engaged in learning, mm -hmm. you know, about engaging with computers on a programming level. So excited world. about it. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, getting back to the point, Sweden mm -hmm. is also one of those cities that has an amazing pipeline of talent, but <laughs> again, there's probably a, there's a handful of cities on earth that have that, and that's a real luxury if you have it, and it's, um, but those cities have their own unique challenges. Mm -hmm. Sweden has, their main challenge is really unique, it's housing. Wow. Housing is so impossible to get there that people mm -hmm. are, you know, I was living in hotels for many, many months there, I couldn't find a place to live. Wow. Yeah, so there's, every city has its Pluses and minuses, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you got to use your strengths and, and use your strengths and, and, and acknowledge your weaknesses and work to hmm. uh, and the way, and the way that London has done to really resolve them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, but yeah, but it's that assessment. But getting back to your question, the other key ingredients, mm -hmm. other than the pipeline of engineering talent, is a hashtag for the community that everyone uses and shares mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. nobody owns. And so we've done this in many cities, or actually, mm -hmm. I've done this in many cities now. And it started with LA with Silicon Beach, which I didn't create by myself, and I, I don't take credit for that. That was a, a huge community kind of effort to come up with a brand, what I call a flag, mm -hmm. which is incredibly important. And once there is a common brand and social media hashtag that everyone shares on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. and Foursquare and everywhere, it's very powerful, and I'll explain why, and it'll become more clear why in a minute. But we, we did this in Stockholm at, at the event that I do there. We created the brand uh, Stockholm Tech uh, in Krakow, Poland uh, a few months back. Uh, OMG KRK, which is Oh My God Krakow. Um, <laughs> Copenhagen's is Copenhagen for the win, CPHFTW. We just did it in Oslo, Norway last week, and theirs is Silicon Fjord. And this is sort of, people are realizing the value of doing this, mm -hmm. and the value is this. It's that 
people outside of Los Angeles didn't realize how much was going on inside of Los Angeles hmm. on a technology in, in our community. We knew how much was going on, but we couldn't prove it or show it until we had this hashtag. And then we came up, beyond just having the hashtag, it was how we used it. Mm -hmm. And LA has a lot of weaknesses, but one thing we do really good is marketing. <laughs> and so what we did was every time anyone went to an event, uh -huh. we took a photo, <coughs> put it on Instagram, Foursquare, mm -hmm. Facebook, with the hashtag, so that people outside the community could see what was going on inside. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. hundreds of people are doing this multiple times per day, it fills Twitter and Facebook with Silicon Beach, and oh wow, here's another tech event, another tech event, another tech event. You know, oh wow, there's 30 people at that tech event taking photos, and there's mm -hmm. 40 people at this event, and 100 people at this event. And it becomes clear very quickly to people in Silicon Valley Oh my gosh, there's a ton of stuff going on in mm -hmm. LA. Mm -hmm. You uh, get noticed. And, and you get noticed, and that's the flag metaphor. So it's having that flag is very important because right now, people assume there's nothing going on here because there's no flag here. There's no signal tra being transmitted mm -hmm. out to the rest of the mm -hmm. world about Maui Tech Night, which I knew nothing about, but you just mentioned it. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I would like to go see that. <laughs> and little Maui. Had, had you had a... Uh, a flag, we actually uh, your do. own hashtag. We of, actually do have well, it. <laughs> you might have it, but it's 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 not only just having it. Yeah. It's it's, use, it's the etiquette that <coughs> goes around using it, and the etiquette is every event organizer oh, and, and every crazy. show producer needs to remind at the beginning of every show and at the mm -hmm. beginning of every hashtag. event, thank you for coming. Please check in with this hashtag, and every event producer does this, and every event producer benefits. Okay. Because it okay. becomes this radio channel across all social media mm -hmm. that goes out not just it's important locally it's very important locally mm -hmm. and then it becomes more important globally so people see what's happening mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and then somebody who's coming here on vacation you get you get you get lots of very important tech people coming here on vacation who have no idea that there's this stuff going on mm -hmm. here like I didn't know Maui Tech Night was happening <laughs> and but if I was you know all of these important tech people are on Twitter and Facebook mm -hmm. and they see you know, they this, keep seeing this mm -hmm. this official hashtag for Hawaii, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, I'm going to go to Hawaii. Oh, wow, there's everything that's going to be happening while I'm on my trip. Oh, I'm going to go and stop huh. by Maui Tech Night. Mm -hmm. And now you've got mm -hmm. huge, important people that normally would never be seen anywhere near Maui Tech Night coming into Maui Tech Night, and it's a big deal. And they could say, hey, I'm going to be there. Why don't I be the guest? You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. happens all the time now in Stockholm and everywhere else. So this is just one of the reasons why that's so important. I'll give you another important reason to do a to really get the hashtag right and, mm -hmm. and make a habit of everyone using it and checking in and doing it, which is when when everyone does it. Um, you made you made me lose my train of thought. I was thinking of the beach we were at earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still I'm still the sun. At the beach. I know I'm still <laughs> on the sitting laying on the beach in my mind. Um, my brain literally just froze. Uh, does that happen here in Hawaii often? I, I yep. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is some <laughs> bizarre effect in the water here that I'm experiencing. Uh, but uh, the, the other really important reason to use the hashtag, A, for the people outside, mm -hmm. but the, the people inside mm -hmm. is your local press, like your newspapers and bigger magazines and things, probably are, don't care about Maui Tech Night yet, right? And they might not care about the, the startup that you mentioned that's into the energy conservation, mm -hmm. which sounds very cool. I, I didn't know that startup was here. I love energy conservation startups myself. <laughs> um, so I'd like to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. But they probably haven't gotten tech coverage or press coverage yet mm -hmm. from the local media. And the local media probably isn't interested in the startup community yet because they don't know it really exists, because mm -hmm. it hasn't really formed as a, as a power, as a, as a union, as a, as a real community yet. Mm -hmm. Once it does, they will, as soon as everyone starts using that hashtag in a real meaningful way, mm -hmm. and it becomes a habit, the local media recognizes it and says, oh, we've got it. And, the, and then what happens is the local media starts covering the startups and putting them on in newspapers and magazines. And then something even cooler happens, which the, then the politicians see that. And then the politicians see that the press are covering it. Mm -hmm. And then the politicians are like, wow, there's this you know, delegation of a thousand people who are very passionate about this, this startup thing, and wow. Um, we need to start supporting we, it. We need to, well, not only just supporting it, but it's like they have needs and wants and desires that uh, we can help, which mm -hmm. like certain taxation issues, certain mm -hmm. 
regulatory issues that are you know, specific to startups, Definitely. which we're going through this in Sweden where I spend 10 days a month there. And, and there the big issue is the housing issue. Hmm. So we're trying to deregulate housing so that people can get housing there, oh. which is, it has been there for 70 years and we're, the startups are like leading the charge on deregulating housing in Sweden. And that's not even something I would have thought about. I know, yeah, but every city is different, <laughs> but every city has their own challenges, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so you have a challenge in that you've got Maui, you have to get on a plane mm -hmm. or a boat to go to Maui Tech Night. That's, that's a unique challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but you have strengths, which is this place is amazing to come visit and you can get amazing people to come and mm -hmm. kind of mentor here. So it's how to leverage that in the most, you know, and, and build a, an efficient system where to, to really capitalize on that. And I feel like I've been talking for way too long, so I will pause. And, but <laughs> I, we're, only, we're only on ingredient number two. So uh, I know this That's is okay, an hour long time. show, but I could, I could literally talk all day about <laughs> growing a startup community, and I do. And this is why it takes several visits, by the way. But, Which is but, good. But in, need, ingredient need number help. three, that's the hashtag, okay? And I've only loosely touched on so that. So, ours is Startup Paradise, just to let you know. Okay. Hashtag Startup Paradise. But was, was there a vote amongst uh, more than 100 people on that? Not that I know but This is probably why it that hasn't been adopted. How do you, how do, you do that? How you, do you go up on stage. and I'm, I'm, At you, an event. Yeah, at an event. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow night or tomorrow okay, at the event. Okay, okay. Um, and you get 100 geeks in a room together, mm -hmm. 100 plus. I just did this last week in Oslo. I did it in Copenhagen, uh, Krakow, Stockholm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is, I'm becoming known for creating the hashtags of these ah, communities. Okay. It, it's a fun little side thing. And, you know, but it's, it's, it is fun and it's important to create the flag for the community, but uh -huh. it needs to be voted on by the community, for the community, owned by the community, can't be some organization's effort. Um, and I like the brand Startup Paradise, but it, unless people feel like they were there yeah, and they were part of the voting process, mm -hmm. they don't feel like they want to um, support it. They feel like it's somebody else's mm -hmm. initiative. Okay. And I, as an outsider, this is the beauty of, and kind of why, why I can go to a place like Oslo last weekend, and we created Silicon Fjords there, which is now working hmm. for Krakow with Oh My God Krakow, is I'm a complete outsider. I have no interest in this city, and I'm, I have no angle or, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm completely... Nothing to gain. No, I'm like, let's, let's, let, this is your community. Let's come up with a brand for your community. Let's take votes, and then it, this is how it happens. <laughs> Who has an idea? They, we need about 20, 30 ideas, and everyone gets a chance to chime in on what they, and we list them all on a board. Huh. Okay. And then we go through and vote, and we cross out the ones that get no votes, and then we go back again. Okay, these ones had some votes. Let's go through again. Okay, all right. And, and it takes about four or five passes through, and then it gets down to two or three, and then and then we got to talk and discuss like the strengths. Okay, and then finally everyone agrees on one, and then they use it. Huh. Okay. But until that happens, people <coughs> generally won't use it. And then you just have to get the event. In the and then it's teaching the event then. organizers. Listen, at the beginning of your event, thank everyone for coming and tell them they got to take a photo and check in. And, and it helps your event. You want to promote your event. Well, go, this is how you do it. You get everyone there to take a photo and put it on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Everyone's going to know about your event. Mm -hmm. And your event it's might have its own body. hashtag, like Maui Tech, hashtag Maui Tech Night. Mm -hmm. Or I'm at Maui Tech, Tech Night, hashtag mm -hmm. Startup Paradise, or whatever the official hashtag mm -hmm. ends up being. You know, you can have more than one hashtag in, in your tweet, in your Facebook mm -hmm, update, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But if everyone is using that to represent, and again, it's, it's so that people outside can see all the awesome stuff that's happening here. It's critically important. But it's also a really powerful channel internally for everyone else to see. Oh, I forgot Maui Tech Night was tonight. There's, you know, all, there's all my friends there, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, uh, now, okay, now, now I get to hear what's going on. And when it, gets, when it, when it really gets used, is when you've got 20 people in the audience using it and they're saying all the interesting stuff that's mm -hmm. being said on stage and I'm sitting you know, here in Waikiki and I'm you know, watching on Twitter every cool thing that's being said at the mm -hmm. event, mm -hmm. you know, being quoted in, on Twitter. That's when it gets really useful. Huh. And you can do this in, in, in Silicon Beach. Like you can, any type of, you go on Silicon Beach hashtag, you see everything that's happening in LA like you were there. <laughs> so cool. yeah, it is very cool. But cool. Ne next ingredient. Oh, wait. Take a quick break. Okay. <laughs> Take a breather. Okay. Let me get some water. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so 
<laughs> My guest today is Tyler Crowley and Brett Kakisako. This is High Growth with HTDC on ThinkTech Hawaii, and we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Dr. Rafi. Every week, I'm right here at Think Tank Hawaii, 3 p.m. on Mondays. My show is Boards' as Bio Briefings. What do we do here? Well, we watch sperm swim. We see if they catch anybody. We check out the latest biosimilars. You know, the kind that, uh, what was his name, the guy with the bicycle? Uh, I guess we forgot his name, but he was taking EPO and other human growth factors. We'll be talking about human growth factors. You want to know where to get some? Maybe I'll tell. Anyway, you can catch me, as I said, every week right here, Monday, 3 p.m., Think Tech Hawaii, Dr. Rafi. You can also find me on Twitter, BioInfo Medical, or you can catch me on Facebook, Dr. Rafael Boritzer. I'll be happy to converse with you. Aloha. Hi, welcome back. This is High Growth with HTDC, and my guests today are Brent Kakesako and Tyler Crowley, who will be speaking tomorrow at the Founder Institute Lecture Series. This is the first in your series? Uh, yep, it's kind of a pilot. Yep. Awesome, very good. And so Tyler was explaining to us the key ingredients for a startup tech community. Yeah. We, we, we what did we cover? We covered, <laughs> we covered two. <laughs> which was the first one? Pipeline. Oh, the pipeline talent. Yes. Pipeline. Yeah, engineering talent. And then, the, and then the flag, which is the hashtag. Yeah. The next one is what I call the nest. nest. And the nest is, well, let's save the nest for fourth. Let's do, <laughs> let, let's do number three is um, the town hall meeting. Okay. And the town hall meeting is where everyone who uses this hashtag or reads this hashtag <coughs> or has any care at all about the, this tech community all come together once a month consistently. Hmm. And at this event is the local leaders kind of sponsor it. So you, maybe you get Microsoft to sponsor it or Google or all these people have an interest in sponsoring these mm -hmm. communities actually. Mm -hmm. And I can help with that as I've done in other cities. <laughs> and then on top of that, bring in people like myself who might be visiting in town anyways mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and ha have them on stage and interview them and share their thoughts and get startups to come up and pitch live in front of the whole audience. Mm -hmm. And these, these town hall meetings grow very quickly. And the first event is usually 10, 20, 30, 50, 60 people. Uh, and within a year, there are 400, 500, 600 people. Wow. Yeah. And, and you get the the whole community come like Stockholm now is at least six. We, we the room every only month. holds six. Yeah, every month, and it only holds six hundred. So we have hundreds of people that aren't able to even get in the room, wow. uh, which is a bit of a problem. But um, <laughs> yeah, these monthly That's events. Amazing. Yeah, and LA is the same. New York's the same. Um, it's it's an important. It's it's the place where everyone gets to meet each other mm -hmm. physically face -face. because you can only do so much through the hashtag, you know. But when you get face to face. Who's hiring? Great, you're hiring, raise your hand. Wh what are you looking for, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Any opportunities that happen, any, oh, you're gonna, who's producing an event within the next month before our next event? Mm -hmm. Great, come up on stage, tell us about your event. Let's get everyone excited about this event and promote this event to the, everyone that's here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's recognize and celebrate people who are doing good things in the community, like a journalist who's covering lots of startups. Now, hey, by the way, one of the local journalists at the local that's newspaper awesome. is now dedicated to covering startups. Let's get them on stage and celebrate them and learn from them, like how do we get more involved and you know, how do they, mm -hmm. it's just that process. Oh, cool. That monthly event is super important. And then the politicians start showing up to that and it's, it's the meeting place where everyone comes together. Mm -hmm. it's, it's critically important. And it needs to be more or less free, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's a great venue for bridging to outside hmm. with people come in from mm -hmm. Silicon Valley or from Asia or wherever, events. yes. And they, this is where they can meet the whole community. Hmm. And investors love those events. Hmm. They love seeing the startups pitch at those events. They love being on stage and talking about their investment firm and how to be more, get more visibility. They want more deal flow and people to know that they're available. So you'll get, um, th and they make great guests typically for those events. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the event, I host that event in <coughs> Stockholm, it's called the Stockholm Tech Meetup. Um, that's a good model to follow. Uh, and I've been, I started doing it in Oslo and other places as well, but hmm. that town hall okay. meeting is cool. A and it needs to be consistent, that's the other every key. Month. It needs to be every month. Um, 
So, and then you need to have like a networking afterwards, where after the official event, mm -hmm. everyone goes and drinks beers together and mingles and <laughs> has fun. So, um, the fourth one mm -hmm. is what I call the nest. And the nest is a physical space where it's open as long as, po hopefully as long as possible, from 8 a.m. to hopefully 8 p.m. and hopefully beyond, where it's a, a large co-working space mm -hmm. that also is, very critically important, an event space connected to it. And, um, and also a meeting space connected to it. So that when people arrive in Hawaii, they want to know where are the startups. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they are. Like it, I would have to do a lot of deep Research. digging. Mm -hmm. they, ne they needs to be a place where people from outside can go meet the startups mm -hmm. and hang out there mm -hmm. in, in a cafe area slash meeting area. And mm -hmm. it's where, so for example, uh, in Los Angeles, it's called Coloft. And this is kind of the epicenter, the, the, gr the ground zero of startups. If you go there, you will meet 50 startups instantly. You'll, you'll be invited to have coffee and meet people. And there'll be other meetings happening there, and you'll meet someone you know, and, oh, hey, hey you're in town. Oh, hey, you got to meet so-and-so. And you could end up spending hours there. Hmm. Um, and it's kind of become the default place where startup people m decide to have their little coffees, mm -hmm. right? Because people are in asking each other all day, hey, can I meet you for coffee? Da, 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 da. Okay, well, yeah, well, let's meet there. Mm -hmm. Because by the w one, at some point during your... 45 minute coffee, you're going to actually end up meeting two other, getting introduced to two other people that you're going to end up. To. That's what the serendipity mm -hmm. effect of that becomes mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. So this, but there's also the event space, which is the event space is a space, an event, a stage with simple lighting, simple audio, uh, seating, where event organizers are have a place to host their events because what happens is is event organizers typically the hardest part of starting an event is where am I going to host it mm -hmm. at, at a cafe or a bar it's not optimal right at all mm -hmm. I need a place with good Wi-Fi because these geeks are constantly on their phone I need um, <laughs> as you know and you know um, I need yeah it needs to be simple yeah but so it's like but if it, if it's free that would be ideal mm -hmm. so as low as possible cost-wise uh, so I mentioned Coloft does this. If you're hosting an event, you need a place to host your event, you go host it at Coloft. In Stockholm, it's now called SUP46, S-U-P-46. In Oslo, it's called Mesh, that, which is probably my favorite example. Mesh is a fantastic venue. Um, in London, it's called uh, Google Campus. These, wow. these, these nests are the, the nest of the community. That's awesome. It is awesome, and it's critically important to, hmm. to really... And then I'll give you one other really key ingredient, mm -hmm. which is called the documentarian. Yeah. And the documentarian is somebody who goes to all of the, the, the meetups, all of these meetups, all of the events, takes, a fo takes photos there, and goes home and then puts all the information online about it mm -hmm. and creates a blog about all of what's happening. They're, do they're documenting the community, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That person is playing a critically important role, and it can be started by one person in their spare time, just in the evenings, going to all the, com the events or whatever. And when you combine these ingredients, just like flour by itself is not so interesting, and eggs mm -hmm. by themselves are not so well, <coughs> eggs are kind of interesting. But <laughs> when you combine them, you get something very interesting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and same is true with the hashtag and the documentarian and the nest and when the and the, and the monthly event. When these things will start working in synergy, that's magic. Hmm you have a real functioning, vibrant community at that point. And it's interesting that you didn't mention something like funding. Like no, fun that's so is, is that's, that's, that that's the water. Does it come? That's the water. Things? Right, yeah, but every community will start off by saying we don't have enough money. <laughs> Everybody outside of Silicon Valley says that, right? <laughs> LA no longer says that, we used to, all the yeah. time. Um, New York no longer, there's... So there's is this something that when this this, this starts this, to happen. Right. The water, start, the water comes when it realizes <laughs> it's needed there. Yeah. Money goes where it knows it's needed. Huh. This is how we get it there. And we, we can do each of those steps, mm -hmm. the f those four or five ingredients. We can make those happen without a lot of, not a lot of money is mm -hmm. needed to do that. But once that's done, mm -hmm. the money will come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. That is great. And you, you're seeing that to a really good degree in Stockholm right now. 
where the, the government there really brought me on to kind of focus there full time. Um, and in the last year, it's been a complete, uh, you know, trans in terms of the amount of outside investor interest, it's now amazing. Um, wow. Stockholm, really, there was just an article last week about that fact, mm. uh, which uh, okay. is a, in yeah. tech.eu wrote an awesome article. And that was one thing also, that bringing in journalists externally mm -hmm. From the bigger tech journalists sure. to come once once it's there once you have all the ingredients once you have an amazing pie it's like hey guess what come taste our pie and you, <laughs> and you invite the Wall Street Journal and whoever to come taste your pie mm -hmm. and they're like holy cow yeah. why he's got an amazing pie <laughs> <laughs> that's when the money starts showing up <laughs> yeah but you can make the pie with with very little money and then once you've got mm -hmm. an amazing pie mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. a matter of getting the so word out people. yeah 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 huh. that's good yeah. So one of the questions I had was... I, I obviously went faster on ingredients three, four, and five. <laughs> <'cause>, yeah. <laughs> so I was going to ask you what, what is the biggest hurdle. But so it depends. It depends on the community. Like yeah, the each each city is different on what the big hurdle is, okay. uh, on what the real challenge is. Nobody would have, I never would have guessed the, the big hurdle in Stockholm was the real estate. Yeah. Uh, but it is. And the biggest hurdle in... in um, Australia, I wouldn't have guessed, would have been the fact that mining is so powerful there, and Oslo has oil. When you have cities that have really strong, uh, almost overbearingly strong industries, mm -hmm. but one type or another, like Oslo is about oil. I mean, it's, by the way, the hashtag, can I curse on this show or no? Can you, can you bleep it? No, it's not. I, it's, no, okay, here, here's what it is. And, and I'm not saying this in a bad way. Oslo's hashtag, when we were voting on it, you know what number two, the, almo they almost picked as number one was? What? Fuck oil. Wow. They are that, because that's how because strong that's oil yeah. is there. Mm -hmm. That they wanted it's the startup so community to be that. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. I, and a part of me was like, wow, maybe we should, maybe that, that's kind of brilliant in a way, <laughs> but it's like, but it, yeah, yeah, it really highlights your problem. Yeah. You're, you know, but I don't know that we want to give that much attention to the fact that there's that big of a problem here. Um, but it ended up being Silicon Fjords. But they, they were very serious about using that hashtag. Wow. That's how big of a problem. Oil is that influential in driving the economy. Mm -hmm. Same with mining in Australia. Mm -hmm. Because every smart person that comes out of university, I don't want to say every smart person, but um, that's where... It, it's easy money. When you come out of college, you get a really high salary right away just to drive a truck, let alone write mm -hmm. software for the mining industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that means wow. who's going to go focus on a, on a startup making 50000 a year when you go work in the mines for, you know, mm -hmm. 250 a year. You know? Wow. Yeah. Hmm. So it's, every city is different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and there's, but there's ways to overcome these challenges. For example, Australia has literally millions of Chinese who are want to apply to be Australian citizens, hmm. right? And there's a, there's a huge relationship between China and Australia, and a lot of Chinese want to move into Australia. Understandably, Australia is a fantastic place. Mm -hmm. No offense to Hawaii. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, many of those, uh, you know, Chinese, China actually has some awesome computer science engineers. I bet. Um, and so it's, hey, you know, maybe we could look at these applications a little differently in favor mm -hmm. of some, you know, give some preference to the ones that we re could really use as a resource. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of entrepreneurs there that, you know, unless they're able to find engineering mm -hmm. talent, they're going to have to relocate. That's called the brain drain effect mm -hmm. that they have there. Mm -hmm. um, and many cities suffer from that. But this is one kind of potential solution that they're exploring is, yeah, to give preferential treatment to these mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. computer science engineers from China. So. Hmm. So I, I was also going to ask how much, <coughs> how much of your government work experience would translate to Hawaii. But I guess since this is, you're still kind of well. First, first, there's no feeling everything language so. barrier, which makes it a little easier instead of uh, Poland or Croatia or others, where it's like we have to speak at half speed and misunderstandings are happening. Mm. People are nodding and no, you don't understand <laughs> what I mean. Oh, you do. Oh no, you don't. Okay, so we can skip that. We, it good. makes it go a little mm -hmm. faster, which is mm -hmm. great. Uh, we're all dealing in one currency here, which makes the, my banking situation far easier. And my, I don't have, you don't have to grant me a work permit, which makes it super simple. I mean, mm -hmm. I, for me, it makes it super simple. A lot of the friction is gone right away. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think things could happen quite quickly here. Oh, great. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah, yeah. And then I was going to ask you also, just personally, how did you get to where you're at? 
Yeah, in, in terms of this, the the the, the like e ecosystem yeah. um, community what growth. Know? It's well in Los Angeles. It's an interesting story. Lon it all started with the London Olympics, 2012. Mm -hmm. okay. Try and solve that mystery. <laughs> yeah, now here's what I mean by that. Um, London did the Summer Olympics, 2012. Mm -hmm. re you recall? Mm -hmm. um, they th realized that they won that. You know, like in 2009, 2010. So they have three years to get ready for it, right? <coughs> they, I think intelligently, decided, okay, we have the Olympics coming in 2012. Um, and if you're going to throw a party at your house, you start thinking months in advance, okay, what, 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 i got to clean the house, i got to make this place amazing. And they did, and, and they see this as a huge opportunity, which it is. Mm -hmm. And they realized, well, when everyone comes, we want this place to be, the, we want people to feel like this is an awesome tech city because the venue where this was happening was like the O2 arena that happened to be where the, the early startups of London were based mm. in, in this area called Shoreditch. Mm -hmm. And they had branded themselves Silicon Roundabout because there was actually is a big old roundabout there. Um, okay. Silicon Roundabout was the, the original branding for, uh, mm -hmm. that they had come up with themselves. Mm -hmm. and. Although it wasn't voted on by the community in the way that I described, mm -hmm. so it didn't quite get the full embracement of everybody in that way. Uh, although it was very much used and uh, it did represent a real community there. And they had, they got, there was a nest that went there called mm -hmm. Tech Hub. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other, and then the many others started popping up. And then Google came in and really provided this amazing facility wow. called Google Campus, and that really became the nest. And all these things started ticking. But what led up to that was London realizing, wait a minute. Somebody's going to need to be the Silicon Valley of Europe, right? Like Europe and America's e economies are quite separate mm -hmm. for language reasons and everything else. London saw an amazing opportunity to be the, the Silicon Valley of Europe because they speak English, so they're, they're kind of a bridge to the, that market. And, and the prime minister, David Cameron, said, we're going to be the Silicon Valley of Europe. They see that as a real opportunity financially, moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I think he's right. Uh, I think every country should have kind of that vision of like embracing tech in that way. Um, and they sought out, like, how do we do that? Because at that time in 2010, London didn't have what it does today with the nest and the, all this thing. Mm -hmm. So at that time in 2010, Los Angeles, Silicon Beach was on fire. We had the nest, we had the hashtag, we had all of these things. Mm -hmm. And they, London built a team called Tech City, with the job of build the Tech City here, make this community happen. Mm -hmm. And they're scratching their heads, how do we do this? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's look around the world at who are doing it, who's doing it successfully, and go talk to them. So they came to LA. Mm -hmm. Tech City came to LA. At that time, it was really just three people. And they started interviewing people in Los Angeles in the tech community. And in those first, their first day that they arrived, they, I think they met with about four friends of mine. CEOs of different tech companies. I was at a tech a startup myself at the time, and they said, um, you know, who, you know, every uh, pretty much all of them said you need to talk to Tyler because this is kind of he, he's driving a lot of this. So we had dinner that night, and at that dinner they said, what's this? What's what's the secret recipe? Mm. And I had never thought of it as a recipe. And then I was like, hmm, what is the recipe? Yeah, I was yeah. like, well, we ha we created the hashtag, and then we. Then we got built the nest, and then we got, got the monthly meeting <laughs> together. And then, uh, it's like, wait a minute, that, that is the recipe. Yeah, and I had never thought of it in that way before. And I'm like, well, here's here's the recipe. And I'm like, interesting. We wonder if this will work in London. Um, and I could talk about more about how those things happened in LA. Those are that's an interesting story in and of itself because it, we were doing it organically. We didn't know we were making the recipe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but in hindsight, it's like, well, I wonder, I wonder if this recipe translates to this other kitchen. Can we hand this recipe to another <laughs> yeah. chef in another kitchen, and will it make the same pie? And, and it did. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It does. It yeah. works. And we've, now it's happened in Stockholm and others, and it's happening in Krakow now, and it's starting in Oslo, and it's, it's really interesting to watch. Um, yeah. Ah, so I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. to see you build yeah. it here. And no matter how, <laughs> each time it happens, it kind of accelerates, because I... I sort of notice yeah, elements learn I learn time, watching probably. each time. Yeah, and, and each time it's a little different. I mean, you know, the, the pie comes out different each time a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
but it, with its own cool flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it might have a little more coconut here. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> cheesy fun <laughs> intended. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, okay, that's, cool. that's that's how I got involved. We'll tell, we'll Tech City said at the end of that dinner, you know, <coughs> can you come to London? That's awesome. And so I went over to London and we met at Ten Downing Street, which is like their. Uh, Prime Minister's office, and they said, "Oh, we met Tyler in L.A. and wow. here's the recipe." And um, and then that led to sort of helping London, which led to helping Stockholm, which has, you know, huh. led to helping a lot of other places. So and it's become a I do it out of uh, I genuinely really enjoy it. You know, nice. it's it's fun. I feel it's, I sleep good at night. It now. sounds like yeah, it's 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 meaningful. <laughs> I have my own startup, and I and I love my startup, but. I think 30 years from now, I'll look back on the, the help I'm doing in Stockholm and Krakow and these mm -hmm. other places, and that's a more purposeful at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I think, perhaps. Yeah. So. Okay, good. I want to yeah. take a quick break, but I yeah. do want to ask you about your startup, because sure. <laughs> we didn't even get to that. Okay. So this is High Growth with HTDC, and my guests today are Brent Kakesako and Tyler Crowley, and we are on Think Tech Hawaii, and we will be right back. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Alalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And Hi. on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, welcome back. This is High Growth with HTDC. We are on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. And my guests today are Tyler Crowley and Brent Kakesako. And we are talking about all kinds of things, startup and tech. And I wanted to ask Tyler, right before we have to wrap up, we have a few more minutes left. So, what are your best tips for pitching? Because I know a lot of companies are working on that. Yeah. And that's a big thing. It's an art form in itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, pitching is something that has nothing to do with writing code, right? And people focus on product and design and code, and, and they get this beautiful pie, mm -hmm. and then they don't know how to make the menu, mm, right? To, 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 to get people to like potentially order the pie. Right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Um, How do you make it sound good? And maybe maybe they take a photo of it, and maybe it's a bad photo, like of a good pie, yeah. right? That <laughs> happens all the time. Um, I don't want to order that. That doesn't look good. It doesn't good. look good, yeah. Right. Um, but 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 then you get those <coughs> menus that are like you know, homemade. You know, this special this and. I can't. I don't know how to speak in menu speak because I'm not a chef. But you know what I'm saying. How some yeah. you know those good but menus. You just want to order that. When you yes, and you're like, oh, that sounds delicious. Like, yeah, yeah, right. Like I'll buy. I, I will pay for that. Right. Pitching is the same way. They're not actually. They're 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 giving you money based on what you're saying about your startup. In, in most cases, they haven't even used it. They don't even necessarily know that it's the best pie in town. But the description is so nice mm -hmm. that they're they're going to give you some money for it. Mm -hmm. Right. They're going to be upset if it doesn't match the description. But, um, so, the the art to pitching is to tell a story, like those menus descriptions. Mm -hmm. It's very visual. Mm -hmm. The the best ones you notice are like you know, butter pecan, uh, this and, uh, and then they, they, you know what I mean, right? Cri with a crispy shell and a da 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 da. And they you really can almost taste it. You can almost taste it. They really describe it in a very visual way. Mm -hmm. Right to your senses, they appeal to your senses. Mm -hmm. Pitching your startup is exactly the same. Mm. Instead of talking about the math and the numbers and the this da 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 da, da you want to appeal to the the vision of it. The the so you start with and how you do that is with characters. So you say, um, g give me an example of of a startup. You can name a name a startup. So I mean, I was just talking about Ikehu. Uh huh. So I think. They provide incentives like mileage or hotel oh. coupons. Okay. If you use your power when there's low power consumption. Okay. And so who who benefits from that? The city. The city. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's the here's the city. They've got a big problem. They've got all you know. They don't have enough power. Mm -hmm. They need to find a way to get people to reduce power. But we pick a person and we say, this is John. John is the manager at the Department of Power. Hawaiian Electric. Hawaiian Electric. John is the, the 
John runs Hawaiian Electric. He's got a big problem. He doesn't have enough power. His city's growing too fast. Mm -hmm. He needs to figure out a way to get people to reduce their usage quickly, or he might get fired. Okay. Right? You add the drama in like that. <laughs> Once you add in the drama, people are like, okay, I'm paying attention to this pitch. <laughs> okay. Instantly. Right? That's not a joke. And that's because part of good pitches, you have to catch their attention to hook their attention at the beginning or they're just gonna they're gonna check email and Facebook and Twitter. Mm. So you can use you can catch their attention with the drama by saying, here's this person and we start with a person for the same reason. The reason we start with a person is if I were to try and get money from you right now for my I'm I'm raising for starving children in South America or something, right? And I say, um, hey I'm raising money for starving children in South America uh, here's all the data about the rainfall. Here's the data about, um, you know, <coughs> education level. Here, here's all this data, 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 data. Or I say, here's Jessica, and Jessica is, you know, not going to eat tonight. You know, sh but for fifty cents, you know, which is more likely to get you to respond? It's the person, right? Every time. So that's why we pick John, and we focus it into a, a person because make humans hu make it personal. That's number one. And then add in drama, right? Like Jessica's not going to eat tonight or whatever. She has a problem. We need to act now or whatever. And that drama can be positive or negative. So this is, this is Sarah. Sarah doesn't know it yet, but um, she's about to get a raise. So something positive like that. Now you're interested. You want to know why she's going to get a raise or, you know, or, or she's going to get fired either way. Or she's going to get engaged or her boyfriend's going to divorce or whatever. Some drama. So we need the character, we need the personalization, we need the drama, and then we need to customize it to the audience in a very meaningful way so we make the character look and feel like as much as possible like the audience. Huh. We, we per really detail personalize it to the person who's listening to the pitch. Mm -hmm. So if it's, this is an investor, then we even do some homework and we find out the investor's daughter's name and we use that name <laughs> and we get a wow. photo that looks like that person and mm. the same age and has maybe even we use wow. the school we name the same school like you really want to go oh wow that your that character could be my daughter. that could be yeah you really <laughs> want them to really yes that's the detail of personalization as much wow. as possible and sometimes you're pitching to a whole group and you can't but it, within that group there's a couple core people that you really want to affect Grab. make it as personal and maybe your hobby is kiteboarding well in this story this person's going to be kiteboarding mm -hmm. right like I'm you see what that mm -hmm. does mm -hmm. it's be, that's a really Black. Oh yeah, you really it wakes the person up. So we, that's the other trick. But then we take this person on a on a little mental movie, and so now we've got the character, we've got the drama, we've got the hobby that matches the personalization, and then this character is going to magically learn about this new service. Uh -huh. Iki, what is it? Ikehu. Ikehu. So luckily, Don, right, who he needs to figure out this problem or he's going to get fired. Uh -huh. Um, who, and he likes, you know, and he's really stressed out, so he drinks his favorite Sapporo. <laughs> and <laughs> but then he luckily learns about Ikihei. And so he logs in, and now we want this product to feel really simple and easy and powerful, right? What's the end? What does Ikihei really want? They want to, we have to decide at the end, what do we want at the end? Mm -hmm. Let's start at the end. What do we want? We want the, the investor to feel like this is, um, the easiest way to save money or whatever. Okay, great. So it's, it's either going to be the easiest or the fastest or the cheapest or which one is it? Pick one. Mm -hmm. We have to know what we want. We have to decide what do we want that person to think or feel about my product at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they probably won't even remember the company name tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But we just want them to feel one thing about this company. What do we want them to feel? Mm -hmm. Focus on that. Mm -hmm. We want them to feel this. And then we work backwards. Okay, so when, as we're using the product, as the character uses the product, we focus on the character feeling that feeling. So the character loves how simple it is and, and very simply enters in two pieces of information, clicks go, and boom, everything's done. Mm -hmm. That feeling of like, and then we also have to highlight in this pitch, what does the user do and what does the user get? So the user enter, enters in some information and they get back something. We want it to feel that the, the, they put in very little and they get out a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And not only the user gets something, but somebody else gets something. So in this case, with the power thing, 
the city manager, Don, gets something awesome. He gets the city, but the user themselves, they love it too because they win. And guess what? There's one other person who wins, which is some other entity also loves this because it's a win-win-win scenario. Mm -hmm. those, are, those are awesome, if possible, as well. You want, you want multiple wins. The user <laughs> and some other source is also benefiting. So, and you want it to feel like the, the user puts in minimal and gets back maximal. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, when they get back the, the result, it happens in an instant, right? The second you, you upload a photo, you click this, you click that, and boom, the website gives this. you back something. Mm -hmm. At that moment, that's sort of the, de the decision moment of, did you, is it a wow moment or not? Did I get back like, wow, Yeah. right? Or is it like, ah. Or is it like, yeah. <laughs> right, that's whether or not your company will probably be awesome or not, uh, that moment. Huh. And if it's not, then you need to make your simple thing even simpler, or you need to make your, what you're giving them even more awesome. Better. <laughs> and the, that's, a ma that's a very important moment. And we need to, you need to be careful on how you, or, you know, how you how you construct that moment mm -hmm. to be a wow moment, mm -hmm. so that they do this very little thing and abracazam, boom, wow, this is what they get and they love it and now they can do this and guess what? He not only did he not get fired, he gets a promotion, <laughs> and you end on what I call the happy ending, mm -hmm. and the happy ending is you resolve the tension that you have started at the beginning with that drama of him possibly getting fired. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He loves this. Everything's great. He's saving money and guess what? The users love it too and everybody's loving this and best of all. He didn't get fired, he in fact got a promotion. <laughs> and then you, that's a very memorable, happy, like, whoo, yeah, this product's amazing. It's like a good movie, it's a movie. You're making yeah. a movie. That is yeah. exactly the same story arc that every Hollywood movie does. Mm -hmm. Here's the character, you personalize with that, you, you feel some connection with that character. You know? Bring in the drama. And they bring in the drama, oh no, the world's gonna end. And then at the very end, yes, he gets the girl back. Save the world. Saves the world, hits the button in time, disconnects the bomb or whatever, right? <laughs> and, and then they walk off happily into the sunset and the end. That's the formula of every movie. And we take that same formula and apply it to a three minute startup pitch. <laughs> and it's very visual and very memorable. Okay, you know, like do you, but do you know why like this it. is so powerful? Here's why. Have you ever seen Top Gun? Yes. In that movie, <laughs> um, do you remember his, his, his partner's name in the movie? Do you remember his character's name? No. Maverick. Maverick. Do you remember Maverick's partner's name? Goose. He remembers Goose, too. So <laughs> this, movie, this movie is 27 <laughs> years old. Why would he remember that? This is a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's 27 years old. Why You shouldn't remember something like that. Do you remember how does he get, how, do, how does Maverick Drive, it's in San Diego where they filmed this movie. How does he drive, how does he get around San Diego? In a, in a cab, in a hot air balloon, on a bus? On uh, a motorcycle? Uh, how, right, <laughs> he does. How did you remember that? I don't know. The motorcycle is in the movie for 30 seconds. This is, wow. a, this is a 90 minute movie from 27 years ago. And you remember this, the motorcycle is so unimportant. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> but you remembered it. Mm -hmm. Now. If I showed you a PowerPoint presentation, 27 years ago, 90 minute long PowerPoint. <laughs> Yikes. What's on slide number five? Okay. Get me out of here. Why, why is that? <laughs> if I showed you a, power, a 10 minute PowerPoint yeah. yesterday yeah. and said what's on slide number five. Yeah. No. No, yeah. not going to happen. <laughs> the drama. No, it's more than the drama. It's the, the our brains are built for stories from the time we were two years old. Why? Because when your, when your parents read you stories when you were a child, uh. before you could speak, your parents read you stories, right? This is, our brains are meant for this. Sure They're not meant, do you read your child PowerPoints? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a good point. And why not? Because we, that's not how our brains work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. That makes sense. We need to wrap. But that was so interesting. It was so hard to wrap it up. Nice. Yes. Thank you so much, my guests. Today have been Tyler Crowley and Brent Kakesako. And you need to go see him tomorrow, tomorrow evening at the Founder Institute Lecture. He will be at Iolani School, Sullivan Center, and thank you so much for joining us. This has been High Growth with HTDC, and I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.